Hey everyone, after finishing up the Japan study mission in March, I went over to India and spoke at the TLC conference. It was just absolutely amazing. And then I wanted to go to the Taj Mahal, so I went up to the Taj Mahal, checked that off my bucket list, then also up to Istanbul, checked that off my bucket list, and then over to Sicily, because I've never been to Sicily, many times to Italy, went to Valley of the Temples, absolutely incredible. Then over to Malta, an amazing country with rich history, a lot of wealth, highly recommend Malta, just absolutely amazing. But my real target was to someday do the Camino de Santiago, starting in France in St. John. And I actually finally accomplished that because the weather broke and at the last minute I flew into Madrid and then transitioned over to France on a train, got my pilgrim's passport, got everything stamped, went and bought an e-bike at the last minute and got on it and away I went. Hey everyone, good morning. So you're about ready to watch the most epic journey of all time. I think that I've ever done. That is the Camino de Santiago, the Francis route starting in St. Jean, going all the way to Santiago. Now, I did it on a bike, an e-bike, very difficult. It's probably gonna take me 18 days, I'm only six days into it, but I wanna show you how I shot the video that you're about ready to watch, because it's very cool. So if you come over here and look at my bike, the way I have it set up, this is my map right here that I have running all the time. This shows me my route and the app that I'm using and the link to that app will be in the description. But the key to shooting the whole video is this right here. My other phone is always open, always on video, and I just take it and I shoot a quick three second clip just like that and put it back in and keep writing. But I never stop writing. So you're always seeing what's happening all the time. It's very fluid, very easy. At the end of the day, I've only got three second clips all the time. And the result of having a three second clips is there's basically no editing. I just dump them all into iMovie, done and put a little voiceover and a little bit of music on and I'm done as you can see the entire trip of the Camino de Santiago so enjoy it it's been very difficult but I highly recommend it I had no idea what I was getting myself into it's intense and beautiful so the trip took a total of 15 days and each day for the most part if I remembered I used this relive app and what it does is it charts your entire course exactly with GPS coordinates in this case you can see the day one going over the Pyrenees and you can see exactly what it looks like I made a little mistake there and I had to go back but it was just an amazing app so hopefully that adds another dimension to the whole trip and in addition to that I also used Google Earth and created a moving map over the entire trip for each day so the first day was really intense. This is going over the Pyrenees. I just went through the lowlands just for a few minutes in the farmlands and it wasn't too steep. And then before long, it started to climb up in the mountains. This is by far the most difficult day. Now today, I only went about 25 kilometers where some days I did as many as 100. But going over the Pyrenees, oh my gosh, it was so steep. And then it turned into a rock mountain trail. And I had to push my bike over the top of this. I ran out of water. When I got to this spot and I found water, I couldn't believe how happy I was. I would have never dreamed I would have run out of water. I'm an Eagle Scout, I know better. But this was such a welcome relief. And then there was nobody anywhere on the trail because this is called the Napoleon route. And the Napoleon route is actually closed this time of year. And I was told it was closed, but I missed the turnoff to go the other way, which was much easier. So I was the only one up there. I really never saw anyone else the entire day, which is very unusual not to see anybody on the Camino de Santiago because there's people everywhere. But in this case, I didn't see anybody and I was all by myself. I was never really afraid. The nice thing was the weather was fantastic and I just had a wonderful experience, but it took me eight hours to cross the Pyrenees on this little bike. Got into Ron Savellas and I went to the mass they had for the pilgrims in the church there. It was just a very special experience. I even had a cerveza because boy, I was hot, tired, and I was ready for some relief. The next day I woke up and I went actually further this time. I did two stages or about 50 kilometers winding through the different villages and towns. And Pampelona was one of the major cities that I would pass through. Now this is where the running of the bulls, but before you get there, you pass through countryside and trails and villages with dogs. And it's absolutely magical. And again, this time I saw a few people, but not a lot of pilgrims. Now this is a very long extended route. This is called the Francis route. This is the most popular, starts in France, in St. John. Sometimes I call it St. Jean, but starts in St. John. 
and you know there's horses there's animals there's goats there's pigs there's cows all along the road and i'm always stopping and enjoying just how beautiful it was that was one of the nice things about being on an e-bike i never felt pressure to go really fast or because I had to get somewhere or it was too far out of reach for me because the e-bike always gave me the capacity to go an extra 10 kilometers or 20 kilometers if I needed to, if I couldn't find a hotel or an alberga or some place to stay. So it really gave me a very relaxed feeling on the entire trip. It was just absolutely wonderful. So this whole part of Spain that you're going through, occasionally you're going to a big city, but for the most part, it's the country. And this whole central part of Spain is very unpopulated. It's a very interesting element of Spanish life because you have Spain, which is a very temperate climate. It's a very nice climate. You know, they get snow here and everything, but for the most part, Spain is a wonderful climate for a country. And yet there's no people in the center of it, except for Madrid. Most of the people live on the coastline. And so when you're out here in the countryside, you're just out in the middle of nowhere and you wander through small little villages and they're very, very quiet. Occasionally you see some other pilgrims like this, but it is stunningly beautiful. Now, I was very fortunate, a little bit of luck, that I chose this time of year to go. Now again, the reason I went is because there was an opening in the weather. It wasn't rainy and gloomy. Now this is in the early, early spring when I left. It was March 28th. And typically this is a very rainy time of year and maybe not the best time to do it, but I saw that the weather was improving. I said, I'm gonna go for it. And if I make it for a couple days, two or three days, that's great. I ended up making it the entire way. And I had this great weather the entire time as well, which was very, very special because I heard so many pilgrims tell me stories of doing this route and it being cold, miserable, and damp. And I experienced just the opposite. It was very crisp in the morning. I had to wear gloves on my hands because my hands would get cold. But then by the afternoon, it would warm up to 65, 70 degrees. And I could just go along and enjoy this and in a t-shirt. Sometimes I had a coat on, just depending upon how cold it was on that day. But it was just spectacular weather. I stopped at churches along the way. And you see beautiful ancient architecture, churches that are a thousand years old. And just very interesting going from some of the newer cities to the older cities. Sometimes I walked into churches and I couldn't believe how beautiful and magical it was. It was so serene. And these small little villages, there are very few people around. Now there's restaurants though that you can stop at. So a lot of people say, do you have to bring food? Well, I did stop at some stores and bought some fruit and things like that. And I would stop and have a little picnic on the side of the road. For the most part, I would stop two or three times a day at these small little restaurants in all these little villages, and I would get a coffee con leche, and I would enjoy that, and I would get an ensalada, a mixed ensalada, which are wonderful in Spain. They have them with tuna and, and tomatoes and onions and cebolla, and it's just really a wonderful experience. So I had a nice little routine. I'd stop two or three times a day, and during that time, I would spend about an hour to an hour and a half. I'd be charging my battery in the bike, and then as well as that, I would be editing the video. So I always stayed up on everything. So at the end of every day, basically I finished every section of video. And then at the very end, I just put it all together so you can see a one hour presentation of what it's like going 800 kilometers across Spain. Sometimes the roads were really, really rough. Sometimes the cobblestone roads in the cities that I went into were really, really rough. But it was still just a wonderful experience. Look at these bridges, just, oh my gosh, unbelievable fresh fruits and vegetables. I would get those oftentimes. I'd get the strawberries and the mandarins and the apples. And this church is well over a thousand years old. And when I walked up the steps, you could just see how everything had settled in. And this was very deserted. There was nobody really up there. There was just one man sitting there. I thought, man, could this church be open? I opened up the door and walked in and this absolutely tranquilo, very beautiful church. And I had a beautiful caprese salad in the evening. And look at these streets, it's just fabulous. And then the next morning I would wake up and my target was Los Acros. And when I woke up, I slept with my window open. I looked out and these guys were already leaving like at 5.30 in the morning. So a lot of pilgrims leave very early. And this guy was a metalsmith, just beautiful. I bought a beautiful little necklace from him of a shell that I wore around my neck the entire trip. And look at these people with their children and the baby stroller. And then as you go further and further, along the Camino you see more and more people. Another thing that was really special about the time of year that I went is it was very green. So I heard from a lot of other pilgrims that normally if you come across this area you know in the summertime it's very dry and very arid looking but yet it was super lush. 
So I felt so fortunate I had the weather and the beauty, and I met so yeah, many cool people, amazing. like those guys I just passed. One guy was an attorney, the other one was some kind of investment banker, and I talked to them a little bit at that little stand and everything, and it was just awesome meeting these people from all different walks of life. Now, a lot of people can't make the entire 800 kilometers at one pop, so they'll start and go for two or three days or maybe a week, and then leave for two or three years, and then come back and start up right where they left off and just continue. It's sometimes a lifetime endeavor just to make it. Now, how in the world I was fortunate enough for the first time I did it to make it all the way in one shot. I was so fortunate. One of the other interesting things is I was planning on walking this. And as I got into Madrid, I started thinking to myself, you know, maybe I should buy a bike or something. I like riding a bike and that way for sure I could finish it because I didn't think I really had 35 days, maybe if I pushed it but not really, and I thought, I'm just gonna go in and check out a bike. I found a great e-bike for very reasonable for about $1,000, and I rode that for about eight days, and then I traded it in for a $2,000 e-bike, a mountain bike, which was much more substantial and would go up the steep hills and rocky terrain that I had to traverse oftentimes. So that was a really a great blessing, and I still have the e-bike. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I'm gonna sell it, give it away, or do something but it turned out to be a really good deal because what happened was if you rent an e-bike, it costs you almost a thousand bucks for a week. And I thought, well, that's crazy. I'm just gonna buy one. And then I'm under the pressure of getting everything done in one week. And if I wreck the bike and I thought, heck, I'll just buy one. So I went to Decathlon. Decathlon is a very famous sporting goods store from France, but it's all over Europe and it's really all over the world. They even have it in Mexico. And they just have really good value and really good quality. So I got all my gear at Decathlon and it was really wonderful. I got my poncho at Decathlon. Now the poncho actually didn't work out so good because when you're riding in the rain, there's only one day fortunately it had rain, you'd get your pants wet. So I traded in the poncho for a raincoat. Later on you'll see me in my yellow raincoat and some rain pants, but I actually didn't have to even use them because I always had great weather all the time. And this is a vineyard that I was passing by with a giant wine bottle. There were vineyards everywhere. So as you were traveling along, everything was always changing, whether it was sometimes it was dairy farming, sometimes it was vineyards, sometimes it was orchards, sometimes it was wheat, sometimes it was barley. It just, they were growing all different things all the time. And then of course there were all the fabulous churches that I stopped in and they were little, small, and look at this altar. It was just like overwhelming. And this was in a small village, so I was so shocked to see something this embellished. And there's my little bike, a typical cafe that I would stop at. And I started noticing all the beautiful balcones or balconies in Spain because the Spaniards are really good at balcones. So I started taking pictures of those as well. But more pilgrims as we go this time, it's a dirt road here. And as we're all going along here, everything's changing. Sometimes it's really rocky. Sometimes you're on pavement. Sometimes you're on gravel. It just depends. And there were some places along this journey that were so stunningly beautiful. Actually, most of it was stunningly beautiful. But some places, and one of them's coming up here, I thought I was looking at a storybook. It was so spectacular. Look at the city. Look at this mountain in the background. I was just like, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. And remember, very tranquilo, very peaceful, not a lot of people around in the towns, the villages, and definitely not a lot of people on the road. I was by myself 90% of the time. Occasionally I'd pass somebody, but it was very, very peaceful out here. And we're gonna, coming up on a spot that I think I've never seen anything so beautiful in my entire life. I climbed up this huge hill and got to the top of this mesa and then went across this mesa and then had to descend this hill and overlook this huge valley and it was just so beautiful. I to the different fields and everything, and before long, and look at the clouds, look at the sky, look at everything, it was just like, it was a storybook, it was so beautiful. And I stopped and did a little narration here on just how beautiful it was. I laid in the grass there just to show you what it was like. It was just so cool being in this experience, this vastness of this, this farmland. It was just overwhelming here. I'm on a paved road but a lot of times it was gravel. I'd come in from city to city, just winding in, and it was just, just crazy beautiful. Now, this is a much, much bigger city. I rented a little hotel room here in this place and got something to eat. Very cold, though. It started to get really cold. I was more up in the mountains a little bit more. I had to get a scarf. I went into a local little store and bought a scarf and everything. And then the next day, we're gonna climb up even higher into the mountains. You can kind of see the topography here. 
I was just little hills and mountains and you wind up and down all the time. And it's just always changing. Everything's always changing. Uh, lots of cambio in Espanol. Now this is one of the larger cities that I went through and this is called Burgas and they have a beautiful huge cathedral there and it was starting to get on Easter time and so you saw lots of Easter celebrations in the streets and in the churches and you saw lots of parades and processions and I started to see this more and more as I went along because we're getting close to Easter and this is a very important holiday obviously for Christendom and so in Spain predominantly Catholic, you saw these celebrations everywhere. And it was just really, I felt so fortunate. Both the weather was great. It was very, uh, there wasn't a lot of pilgrims, so it was very quiet and tranquilo. Uh, the food was great, the wine was great. And the time of season, there were lots of things going on in terms of the cities and everything. And it was just a beautiful time of year. It wasn't hot, it wasn't too cold. It was just right in that sweet spot before the pilgrim season really started heating up in early spring and May and June and into the summer months. And it was just a wonderful time to be traveling through all these small little Spanish villages. I always stopped and said hi to the dogs and the cats and said, hola gato, hola perito, and always saying hello to everybody along the way, always saying buen camino. Now this buen is a camino. phrase I'd never heard before until I started going on this. Somebody said buen camino means good, good travel or good road ahead. And I started saying that all the time. Now this was absolutely crazy. This small little church, wow. these two nuns, they were taking videos. They took videos of me. It was amazing. They were all techie. They had their Samsung phones and they did a little blessing for me. And then I went up to the front of the church and prayed. And they put, gave me this little necklace and they took a video. I was like, man, these people are totally high tech. The only thing they didn't do is serve me a beer. They were, they were so amazing. They're so friendly and everything. But I was always saying hi to everybody along the way and made some cool friends and exchanged names. And, and numbers and everything. It's just a really a fun time meeting these people and learning about their different journeys. Most people are out there in a very solitude fashion, you know, just walking alone by themselves. And this is that place I was telling you about. Look at this valley. I was up on the hill overlooking, coming into this valley. It was so picturesque. And just the, the road just winding and meandering, a little dirt road that I was on. And occasionally you'd come across some other pilgrims. Look at this. It's just like 
wow, I could not believe how absolutely stunningly beautiful it was. And again, so peaceful. So many people out there I never listened to anything on my AirPods, never listened to anything. I was always just quiet, riding along, enjoying the scenery and taking the whole thing in and trying to photograph as much as I could. I had a great yeah. system with my phone easily to pull out and videotape everything. I started going into all the towns and circling around the fountains or the little water features that they would have. And I tried to just capture the, the whole element and lots of cool little rock walls everywhere. And everything was always changing. It was just, everything was different. This is a great little alberga and little restaurant that I stopped at for a couple hours and recharged my batteries. And then off again, out into the big wild blue yonder on a little path, a little dirt road, and just edifices everywhere, different kinds of structures that were hundreds if not thousands of years old. Look at this one. This is an old monastery that I think was bombed out in the war and they never rebuilt it. Just absolutely stunningly beautiful. You're just going down the road again, and then another little church comes up and a field and cobblestone streets and beautiful buildings and structures. You can just kind of imagine what life was like back then, uh, being living in these villages. This is a very important part of survival as people work together to survive from raiding the marauders that would come across the land, the landscape. And you know, Spain was overtaken many times by all different invading forces and they, they prevailed in the end. And look at the, the woodworking here. I just couldn't believe how beautiful this altar was. And I think I was the only one in this church and the curator of the church showed me this little mock-up of it and was showing me how the church was made and everything, was so proud of it. Just absolutely beautiful. This particular church was like a museum and it would cost like a one euro to get in. It was very inexpensive, but it was very cool. And you can see the tables there. Those are the little restaurants along the way. So you'd come into a village and there'd be a couple little restaurants, maybe one or two that you could stop at and get something to drink or get an ensalada or whatever you wanted. And then there's sheep along here. Actually, I keep telling you that there's this special magical place, this plateau, and now it is definitely coming up. So I crossed over this little river and then climbed up the side of this mountain. Look how it's winding up there. And you know, this is a tough hill. I had to push my, my bike up this hill. It was very, very steep. And now I'm up on the mesa and this is it. I come out to the end of this mesa and I look out over this beautiful valley and go down this road into this spectacular valley. I was just like, oh my gosh. It was right out of a storybook. Now I know where the storybooks get those concepts. It isn't the storybook. The landscape inspires the writers of the storybook because I was basically living and writing through a storybook for 15 days. Now this was one of my craziest days because I was able to go 100 Ks, which is very unusual. Typically 50 to 70 K, sometimes three stations a day when everything went perfect. But today I went four stations, unbelievable, and over 100 K all the way to Lyon. Now I did this, mind you, on my old bike, on my old little street bike that was electric but not nearly as powerful as the new one that I got. And it was just amazing that I made it this far. When I walked into this church, it was very, very beautiful. And I captured this beautiful scene of this man who had gone in there to pray. He was on his pilgrimage and he walked out and I caught that. And I thought, so beautiful, so typical of what people were doing, the long, long journey they were enduring. Because this is really an endurance race because it goes on and on and on, footstep after footstep, 
And that's one of the beautiful things about the bike is it seemed to go by much more quickly. And that was St. James, that statue. So you'll see the statue of St. James all the way along. And there's lots of shops where you can buy things if you need shoes or you need hiking poles or anything. It's another really cool town that I went through. Again, notice the weather, just absolutely spectacular. And it was just beautiful. Not real warm, but not cold. It was just perfect. People stopped on the side of the road. Look at this tiny little chihuahua on this journey with his master. Isn't it just beautiful? And some days it was really windy. I had two days of really hard uh, headwinds. And it was kind of difficult actually because it was stopping me a little bit. But I met other bikers when I stopped at restaurants. We became friends and they were just so cool. It's amazing people on this journey. But again, most people were pretty quiet and to themselves. You know, you could try to make friends with people and some people were more open. Other people were more like meditative almost on this journey. This is a newer bell tower compared to the ancient bell towers that you traditionally would see along this road. And I stopped outside this little town on a little bench and ate my lunch and I thought, this is just too perfect. I had a tractor come up beside me and I filmed him coming and going. Just absolutely amazing. Maybe you can see now why I never wore AirPods or never listened to anything because I was just taking it all in. Look at the mountain range over there. There's snow on it and the fields and the wind blowing across the grass. It was really, really special. Now, another thing that was really cool for me that I was very fortunate about is my schedule. So I would wake up, you know, seven or eight o'clock in the morning and then I would work and answer messages and I wouldn't get on the road till like 10, 11, sometimes as late as 12. And the beauty of this was all the normal pilgrims, they left much, much earlier. This is an Easter ceremony in one of the towns that I would slept in. And this was happening right outside my balcony about 10 o'clock at night, it's kind of funny. But one of the cool things about the way I did the Camino was because I left later, you know, 10, 11, 12, most of the pilgrims would leave very, very early in the morning. And so if there was a large group of them, I never really even hit them, which was kind of nice because they were getting to the albergas, the, the places they would stay or the hotels they would stay in, you know, about one o'clock in the afternoon. So they would leave at eight and get there one. They'd be hiking for like five hours. They were exhausted. I was leaving at noon. So as a result, I didn't see a lot of pilgrims or I didn't have to dodge a lot of them on my bikes, if you will. So it was always kind of very peaceful and nice. And on the flip side, I would get in very late uh, like five, six, seven o'clock into my hotel. So this is the moment of truth. I got into Lyon and I broke my kickstand on my little street e-bike and I went to get a new kickstand and they said, you're riding the wrong bike. You should really get a big heavy duty mountain bike. And I said, but I already bought this eight days ago. I was like, you can return it. We'll give you this one. So I upgraded this amazing, powerful mountain bike, e-bike, and it was just awesome. And Marta helped me out with the whole acquisition and returning the old bike and getting the new bike. And I was off for the next part of my journey on a super powerful mountain bike. I wish I would have bought this in the beginning, but hey, you know, you make some mistakes, but Decathlon is the best store ever. They took back the original bike, gave me a new one, and I was on my way. And look at this gal, I was falling her out. She had a little poodle or a little dog in the front basket. It was so cute as I left Leon in the morning morning and continued on my journey on my brand new mountain bike.
So I spent almost the entire day climbing a mountain, thousands of feet up, and then I got this magical downhill, which was just over the top. And I got down all the way to the bottom of the valley in this beautiful little village with this beautiful Romanesque bridge that's probably a thousand years old, and a bunch of pilgrims soaking their feet, their weary feet, in the cold, icy waters coming down from the mountains. It was just so cool. And as I traversed this bridge, then I went into the little town and the typical town that I had been going through for the last 11 days, beautiful stone walls and wooden doors and balcones and monuments. As I got closer to Pon Ferrado. And Pon Ferrado was the ultimate destination today. And you see all the pilgrims are just huge swaths of pilgrims everywhere now because they're getting closer. You know, we're getting within the 100 kilometer mark. And this is my relive chart. You can see I'm down the flatlands when I start off in the morning and then climbing into the mountains, into the mountains, climbing, climbing, climbing the entire time. And then really steep trails that were rock and dirt. And you saw some of the videos, it's just incredible what happened. And then Pomferrado, um, again, I'm probably not saying it perfectly, but a beautiful, beautiful city and lots of Easter celebrations going on here. A lot of beautiful churches, wonderful restaurants. And I got a little condo right in the middle of town, uh, literally overlooking all this festivity and activity. And they had huge, huge celebrations here and the sunset was magical. I had a rooftop balcon, and I sat up there as the sun was going down. And then in the morning, I went up there and also took the sunrise coming up because I thought it was such a beautiful setting. You can see I was up in these mountains and I had to come down into the valley because that's where this city is. And then the sun rising in the morning and setting, it's just really a special, special time. Then the next morning, I got up and I continued on my journey. So I spent a beautiful night and got up in the morning from Pomparadas and then again another hill climb day. I had a little bit of a flat valley to start off with as you can see and then a very, very steep climb up into the mountains again. And this time I'm heading towards a place called Osibro and I get up to the very top. I actually stay in Lanis. I'm not saying these names perfectly, I know it. But Osibro is at the very, very top, and it's one of the oldest churches on the entire Camino. And I got up there, and it was absolutely beautiful. This is the morning leading, leading Pomferrado, and look at this amazing wisteria. I've never seen a wisteria like this, just so beautiful. And in Pomferrado, there's a beautiful castle there, too, you can visit. And as I was going out to the countryside, you know, lots of vineyards and everything, just 
Beautiful day, beautiful weather. Everything was as perfect as could be, particularly knowing I was gonna have a very hard day climbing up into the mountains. So this is still down the lowlands, passing by a monastery, and there's St. James, the statue of St. James. You see him all the way along the path, along with lots of pilgrims, and you get more and more pilgrims as you go along here. And here's one right here, but you can see how beautiful this is coming up into the mountains. A little bit gradual now, but it just gets steeper and steeper as I went along. But a beautiful, beautiful day today and got up to the very top of the mountain and a spectacular view. I ran out of battery, unfortunately, uh, towards the top. So the last about half hour, I had to huff it. And, you know, I had at least 25, 30 pounds of gear uh, on my bags in addition to the heavy bike and in first gear and it was tough. And I just did my Iron Man thing. I just, just grunted it out. I just, just, I counted to, I count to 10. I go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, and just keep my mind focused because sometimes the climbing can be pretty difficult. Again, this is all very gradual. It gets way, way steeper as we go along. So I stopped at an alberga, a little coffee shop, got some lunch, charged my batteries, got me another 45 minutes up the hill, and then I ran out. And this is what I mean. I'm pumping up here, and it was, oh, it was tough. But I finally got to the top, and look at this fabulous view. I came up through all these mountains, and this is Osibro, and it's a beautiful, beautiful little town, probably one of the best towns I went into with this old, old church, probably a 1,000 years old and just all the candles lit and just sat down, did a little prayer of gratitude and thankfulness. And then I finally went into Laramis where I stayed in another alberga, which was just bunk beds. And it's pretty cool. And it was really nice and clean. The people were friendly. There's only a couple other pilgrims there, but it worked out really well. The next day, off again onto day 13. And today again, quite a bit of hill climb all the way through the mountains, up and down, up and down and just another beautiful day. Every day it just seemed to be like, wow. And there's always another adventure. There's always something different to see because everything's always changing. You know, now I'm getting into more of the cattle area where there's a lot more uh, dairy farms and raising cattle for meat. And it's just different all the time. And the, the roads are beautiful. And there's little churches along the way. And this is a very high summit that I came up to. And I stopped and had a break there. There were lots of cattle along the way. And look at these rolling hills. And this man directed me. I went down the wrong road. He said, hey, no, 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 it's up here. And I, I took the right road. So fortunately, I didn't go down into that valley. That would have been a nightmare if I went into the valley because you got to pay attention. You can actually get lost, believe it or not. But there's lots of good markers, but you got to pay attention. And I've got a map all the time. I'm watching the map, but sometimes I'm not paying attention perfectly. This was a cool spot, though. Uh, this lady was driving all this cattle along, and I had to follow her for, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 minutes as she got into a town and then the cattle went off to the left and then I got to go through and this beautiful old tree and I met these guys from Korea, this one guy from Korea and he was really cool and he'd been hiking for like 25 days and then I started seeing these yellow benches with these arrows which are really popular and I love those, those are just really cool. And this guy celebrated, yes, Buen Camino, so cool. And another monastery that I went through that was just absolutely beautiful. And up here, I stopped by a little river and had lunch, and it was just, oh, so special. So a lot of times I'd just bring ham and cheese with me. I'd stop at the local Lytle or, or Aldi's and get some food, and I'd stop, and I found this beautiful little setting. I went by this little church, I go, wow, I gotta go by that again. And then when I went back by it again and came back, I saw this bridge, I went over this bridge and went and sat in this grass and just had the most tranquilo, beautiful lunch I think I've ever had. I had a couple times where I just stopped on the side of the road and just rested and it was just so special. This place was wow, over 
the top. The sky is gray or blue. No, I don't care because I am on my way up and I won't stop. I won't slow down. Standing on my feet, I'm gonna rise up. No, I won't stop. It is my time. Because I know what it's like to be broke, yeah. It's like when nothing goes your way So I'm gonna let myself enjoy The fruit from this lucky day Yeah, I am on my way up I won't slow down Yeah, I am on my way up I won't slow down Does it seem magical? It is magical. 100 kilometers. I remember seeing signs for 700 and 600, and now I'm only 100 away. It's just so hard to even get your head around it. It was so far, but yet so beautiful and so wonderful. Really one of the best journeys of my life. I would do it again in a second. I watch this video and I think, oh my gosh. And, and it would, I would see so much more the second time because you know, you're kind of caught up in just trying to make sure you go to the right place. And this is a really interesting place. This is Puerto Marino. And this place was underwater. Well, actually, they flooded, they made a big reservoir, and the whole city was underwater. And so they had to rebuild the city up above. And they had big celebrations for Easter here, too. And so they literally rebuilt the city, you know, up about 100 meters or up higher so the reservoir could fill up. And I had great peppers and popo, which is octopus. And I took off the next morning. And I'm getting closer now. I'm like basically only two days away. This is. Uh, just very close. I maybe could have made it one day, but I'm glad I didn't because this is actually a tough day. There are lots of up and down hills everywhere and lots of dairy pasture here and dairy farms and a little smelly sometimes, but I, I didn't mind at all. And this is really cool. So they had a huge car elevator and I parked my, my bike downstairs and had all plugged in. And so elevator opened up and I rode my bike out and that's the hotel I stayed at. And then I was on the road again, only uh, this is day 14. So two days left and this is a big reservoir that they filled up. The city used to be much lower and then lots of up and down hill climbing here. It's just crazy, but again, insanely beautiful. I'll tell you, if, if anybody's ever considering doing this, first of all, I highly recommend doing it on an e-bike. Second of all, you know, you could rent one. Uh, you know, they cost like maybe a thousand bucks a week or something like that. I, you have to check into the price. But when I looked into it, I thought it was too expensive. So I said, hang on, I'm just going to buy my own because I didn't know how long it was going to take me and I didn't want to be under pressure and I just want to just enjoy the whole thing. So I went and bought my own. So here's what I tell people. First of all, if you're going to do the Camino, I would do it on a bike over, over walking. I mean, you can do it on walking. It takes a long time. It takes a month, over a month, 35 days. Or you can just do a short abbreviated one, but if you want to do the whole thing, it's going to take, take some time. The bike shortens it up to maybe 15, 16 days. So you basically you take a two week vacation, a little more than a two week vacation, and you can pull this off and you'll have a, a memory that you'll never forget for the rest of your life. And it's so enjoyable because with the bike, there's no pressure. You can go anywhere you want. You can stop. You can catch up, you can make up time really easily. You can have nice long coffee breaks for an hour where your battery's charging and you know catch up on your emails or whatever you have to do and then enjoy this magical surrounding. And these things are for storing their grain, they're, they're rodent proof. So those little things, you start to see them a lot in this part of Galatia. 
uh, where they take the grain and the corn and they put it in there and I think keeps it dry and then keeps the rodents away. This is one right here. I was wondering what they were and I had to look it up on the internet, but again, lots of little albergas and little restaurants all the way along. And they're always saying hello to everyone and Buen Camino and Buenos Dias and Buen Dia. And it was just a really fun time. That's another thing I learned about this trip. You know, you gotta be, you really have to be an extrovert. Otherwise, you know, it can be a little solitary. So I was always saying hello to the dogs, the cats, the cows, the people, always saying hi. And that was not necessarily normal. Most people didn't do that, but I did it. And I had a great time, you know, being jovial and being fun and being, uh, being happy. And some horseback riders here was just really, really cool. Always waving at the farmers and they were waving back at me. And they loved the fact that I, I took interest in them and I was filming them. They could see I was filming them. I held up the camera and I said, Buen dia! And people would turn around and say hello. And you know, It was fun. It was a great thing. I, I'd love to do this again because I think I would do it even better than I did the first time. But I have to tell you, God smiled on me this time because the, everything was as perfect as perfect could be. I could have never written a script better than this script. From the bike, from the, from the weather, from the time of year, to how green it was, it just worked out really, really well. Now these people were from China, they were walking backwards, they were super cool. I stopped and talked to them. And then I went across this bridge again and more people soaking their feet in the water. It was just so cool. Now remember, this is it. It's day 15. Can you believe it? I woke up early in the morning and left the town of Azula, I can't say it correctly. I'm so bad at the pronunciation. And this is it. And I've got about a 40 kilometer day and I arrive at Santiago de Compostela. And I go right by the airport, really, really cool. And then into town. So this is the big day. It was just amazing waking up in the morning and realizing that I was gonna accomplish this. This is the little place I stay, this is the little town. And then I'm on my way every morning, waking up day after day, and, you know, going and, and, and you just kind of think to yourself, are you ever going to make it, you know? And here I am, I'm going to make it. Santiago de Compostela. And it's hard to believe that I've already got to this point because it just has been a long, long journey. But an amazing journey. You've been watching it and hopefully you've enjoyed it and been inspired by it because I tell you, I'm inspired to do more. It has just been amazing. The weather's been great. Today, a little tiny bit of rain, a little overcast, a little sunshine poking through, but very optimistic. I love e-biking. I love this whole experience and I highly recommend it. So let's get going.
okay, this is it. I made it into town. I'm on the last few hundred meters, and there you can see Santiago de Compostela, and I go through this uh, little opening, and someone's playing the bagpipes in there, and then I enter into the major square. This is where everyone arrives and sits down and just contemplates the immensity of the journey that they've just been on. And I certainly had the same feeling as well. And as I looked at all this, I thought to myself, you know what? It was the journey that was so special. Arriving is great, but the journey was really what was magical. I made it 800 kilometers. I planned to do this two years ago. Never got the opportunity. The weather broke. I went immediately to France and 800 kilometers later in 15 days on my bike. I made it. What a journey. So I got my certificate and reliving this journey is one of the most beautiful things. I'm so glad I captured it on video. I was not planning on capturing it on video. But I thought, well, you know what, so beautiful. Why not capture a couple spots here and there? And before long, it turned into a full, full movie. And now you get to watch it. So don't miss this opportunity in life. Plan and live life. As I say in my book, Lean Travel, travel light with a full heart.